As we all know, crop plants require 17 nutrients to complete their life cycle. Essential plant nutrients are divided into macro and micronutrient groups. Macronutrients fall under into two subcomponents, primary and secondary macronutrients. Primary macronutrients include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. While secondary macronutrients include calcium, magnesium and sulfur. Micronutrients include zinc, copper, iron, manganese, boron, molybdenum, chlorine and nickel. Further, the essentiality of silicon, sodium, vanadium and cobalt has been considered, but it is not yet proven. Macronutrients are required in higher amounts compared to micronutrients. However, from the plant essentiality point of view, all the nutrients are equally important for plant growth. The first three macronutrients, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, are supplied to plants by air and water. Hence, their supply to plants is not at all a major problem. The remaining 14 nutrients should be present in the plant growing medium in adequate amount and proportion for proper plant development and growth. When the supply of a particular nutrient is at an inadequate level in the soil or when plant roots are not able to absorb required amounts due to unfavorable conditions in the rhizosphere, plants show certain growth disorders. These disorders may be stunted growth, discoloration of leaves, reduction in root growth and also reduction in growth of newly emerging parts of the plant. Visual symptoms are the cheapest nutritional disorders diagnostic technique that is most available. However, it needs a lot of experience on the part of the observer because deficiency symptoms are confused with drought, insects and disease infestation, herbicide damage, soil salinity and drainage problems. Sometimes, a plant may be on borderline with respect to deficiency and adequacy of a given nutrient. In this situation, there are no visual symptoms, but the plant is not producing at its capacity. This condition is usually called hidden hunger. Here are some guidelines that would help us to understand and diagnose nutritional disorders in crop plants a far better. Guideline number 1. Deficiency symptoms normally occur over an area and not on an individual plant. If a symptom is found on a single plant, it may be due to a disease or insect injury or a genetic variation. Guideline number 2. The earlier symptoms are often more useful than late mature symptoms. Guideline number 3. Where the symptomology occurs on the plant depends on the mobility of the nutrient within the plant. Plant nutrients can be classified as mobile or immobile which depends upon the mobility within the plant. Mobile nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and magnesium can be translocated from the older leaves to the developing plant pots and hence deficiency symptoms tend to show on older lower leaves. On the other hand, immobile nutrients, many micronutrients, calcium and sulfur are not easily translocated within the plants and deficiency symptoms occur in young upper leaves. Guideline number 4. The form and location of symptoms on the affected crop will help in guiding the diagnosis. Symptoms associated with deficiency may take several forms including chlorosis, necrosis or abnormal growth. Chlorosis occurs when the production of chlorophyll is reduced which results in a yellow to pale green leaf color. Nitrogen, Sulfur, Iron and Magnesium are nutrients that play important roles in chlorophyll production and function, hence their deficiencies tend to cause chlorosis. Necrosis in which when the plant tissue dies. Necrosis is commonly associated with nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium deficiencies. Abnormal growth occurs when the inadequate amounts of a nutrient in the plant restrict cell elongation and replication resulting in stunted growth, deformation and crinkled leaves. With this basic information on hand, it would help us to pinpoint the nutrient associated with specific nutritional disorders and frame the needed management practices. <laughs>